His name is uh, Paul Fleming, young Australian. He's become the first Australian to fight for Bob Arum's famous top rank stable. Now, they call Paul Showtime. He had a fight this morning and had a first round knockout. So it's a pretty good effort by this kid. Tim Sheridan has this report on a fellow called Paul Fleming. Keep an eye out for him. He looks like he's got the goods. Double jab. Boy, one, two. Speed faster. Bring your back leg up. Go. Three, fast. Turn. Good boy. It's where what I do, it's my job, my life. Oh, good. It's a second nature to me now. Hey, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm, I'm 23 years old and I'm a 10 year veteran in the sport already, so I've been doing it for a long time. If there's no room for any more ink on him, they'll use it writing about Paul Fleming. This weekend he began work as one of American promoter Bob Arum's top ranked stable. Bob Arum signs guys like Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, and he signed Paul Fleming, so obviously they rate him. It's a long way from Tully, North Queensland, where Paul's dad, Steve, loved the sport. The chip off the old block was more of a toothpick, but that was it. And ever since I was little, it was kind of like the, the, a show we put on when friends used to come around. Dad used to get on his knees and, and shadow spar with me and hit, hit, hit punch around with me and, uh, you know, taught me how to stand, taught me how to throw punches. Ever since I was... I, I had a set of boxing gloves before... I can remember like a little set of boxing gloves and yeah dad was the one that you know kind of got me into it and that but he wanted to wait till I was a little bit older and yeah as soon as I turned 12 that, that was it. He won the national 41 kilo title after eight months in the sport and word began to spread about a kid with fast hands and a quick wit. By age 15 the little Southpaw had three national amateur titles in the under 17 54 kilo division. I remember him when he was representing uh, Queensland in the Queensland titles or, and I knew there was something special about the kid, um, different to a lot of the kids. Paul ticked off his first dream when he fought at the Olympics, losing narrowly to the silver medalist. Didn't really get home to see my family much and, and just going there and it all paying off and, you know, fighting for my country and it, it was amazing, you know, it's nothing I can, the words can't explain how it was. One year after Beijing, Paul lost his father Steve. With his mum and intellectually disabled younger sister Rihanna to look after, suddenly he was a man inspired. If I didn't have such a good family base and if I didn't have such a strong father, I, I wouldn't have felt followed through with the sport. If someone has someone to look up to, you know, they can do anything. There, there, there's no difference between me and them. If, if you want to be a sportsman, be a sportsman. If you want to be a scholar, be a scholar. You want to be a uni graduate. You know, you just got to have someone to look up to and give you that inspiration to do what you want to do. Come to me. Come to me. Sydney trainer Billy Hussain came into the picture after Paul won his first few professional fights. He'd moved to the Sunshine Coast, but trainer Ronnie Anderson felt a new pro should be among serious talent. I didn't hesitate. Straight away I jumped on and I knew this kid could be the next world champion. And um, obviously it's a long process with, with building up young guys, especially guys that come from Tully, then move to the Sunshine Coast and Sydney. Sydney's a big city like LA and um, it was a big culture change for him too. Paul's biggest shock came in the gym. You know at the start, um, he was a lazy boy. Very good Paul, very, very good. And I knew that he had a lot of talent but he was a bit lazy. He needed someone to push him. Lazy Boy is now one of Billy's toughest. If, say, I don't succeed and I look back, at least I know I, I gave it 120%. Without his girlfriend, the boy from the bush outside Tully says he'd struggle on the big streets of Sydney. Bianca shares his dream and hobby. He's a big ball of energy, he's funny, he's, he makes me laugh more than anyone and he's crazy and I love that about him. And now, he's got a lot of drawings and I like that too. They would like to change people's opinions of tattoos, but right now the more achievable target of a featherweight world title is the main aim. Billy Hussain believes the boy called Showtime will end up a hot ticket. It's amazing where from last year to this year, the, the person that I that I met to the person he is today is a different guy, but um, 
He's matured so much. He's a beautiful young guy and uh, the future is bright for him, real bright. Where do you want to be in a couple of years' time? Uh, I don't know, somewhere with this midget, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, doing great things, eh? Doing great things, yep. <laughs> Oh, that was so politically incorrect, but it was still funny. <laughs> this midget, he's, he's harsh. Enough. Look, he seems like a good kid. He, he, he articulates, and he's obviously got a bit of ability. First round knockout in California this morning. So, you know, you can yeah. only do what you can do. Oh, it's a great effort, and uh, yeah, he's he's a he's a pretty funny young kid, man. He's got some talent, so I wish him all the best. And you know, let's keep it keep it on how he goes. When's that fight again with you? <laughs> Wednesday, 20 July. Week. Wednesday, 20 July, mate. Good on you. Thanks, Danny, for joining us.